welcome to subramani i'm going to talk about a concept which i have used and which uh, morgan housel uh, talks about in his uh, blog that is working on uh, probability now let me explain what it means uh, recently uh, everybody has been uh, talking about a pharma recovery uh, a banking uh, bfsi to do better than what it has done in the last maybe 4 years 5 years and uh, infrastructure things are happening uh, so you know people have been talking of uh, some of these industries to concentrate on uh, nobody is talking of it and people feel maybe it has had its run and now there is nothing great which is going to happen in it that's the feeling that's perhaps even the consensus feeling so it may be a good trade to get out of a it company or an it fund and get into pharma company this is the trend which you need to believe uh, at least this has been uh, talked about last two months but i have always asked myself one question what if this consensus is wrong what if i sell a tcs uh, and buy a sun pharma completely i have only one share i have only tcs and i shift i sell tcs and buy sun pharma uh, simple they shift from tech to pharma now what happens if i am wrong this is a question which uh, bugs me a lot and i also don't like that uh, better safe than sorry kind of a thing means uh, putting all my money into pharma so what i have done which has worked for me is to create a core portfolio my core portfolio would uh, look a lot like the sensex in the sense the industry representation would be uh, there would be it there would be bfsi there would be fmcg uh, i also include some entertainment uh i also include uh, travel and uh, things like that so this would be my portfolio so i will never go completely right or completely wrong uh in the sense that even if i were to sell a lot of my um, uh, it companies and uh, shift to pharma which could be again uh, uh, lupin uh, glenmark pharma uh, glaxo pfizer and uh, sun pharma of course uh and maybe one healthcare fund or a pharma fund and this i i shift i will still be left with some uh, infosys gcs wipro and hcl through their uh, good and bad times i would hold this so whether uh, uh, tcs is 3800 or 2900 to me doesn't matter it will always be there in my portfolio so sun pharma was also there in my portfolio even when it was 1200 yes i sold a bit then i saw it come down so i bought it at 700 then i saw it come down to 300 and odd i think in 2020 march april when i bought so i will continue to buy i'll continue to sell but i will always hold because i know sometimes i could be wrong the same reasons because of which uh, sun pharma is successful because it's going to sell in the us and a strong dollar could be the same reason why a tcs hcl infosys wipro could get a lot of work in the us and uh, it make uh, make it look very cheap to outsource because the dollar is getting very strong if say let the dollar is at 90 obviously these people will get more work and be very profitable so this probabilistic thinking means i create a portfolio and uh, i have something like say a reliance i always have a reliance of say 400 to 1000 shares of reliance i will always have and sometimes i may go above and buy or go below but i will never go below a particular number simply because i could go wrong and these big companies like say a siemens or a cummins or a coromandel international or vedanta i have not touched for a long period of time i've got very good returns i've got very good dividend same thing for psu shares so it is not you know in absolute terms to say sell every it stocks and uh, stock and go to pharma that never happens in my case i will never go to zero it i'll never go to zero bfsi i will never go to a uh, zero in car telecom for example i'll never go to zero bharti airtel i'll never go to zero reliance right so the amount of money that i made in bharti and even in tata tele and things like that is enough to pay for all my phones for the rest of my life and all my telephone bills okay this is some kind of a mental accounting but uh, words like i do not know and uh, actually the why i do not know these are very four very very important four words in uh, investing and generally in life i guess 
and what if I am wrong, right? Uh, if you want to call I am one word, then what if I am wrong, right? Four words. These are also important because it forces you to think in probabilistic terms, uh, which Morgan Housel talks about. I'll, I'll uh, tell you something of what he talks, and uh, he says, yeah, people always think in terms of what is very right or very wrong. I could be right about uh, pharma and I could be wrong about IT. There, that is the fear in selling of all IT and uh, shifting to a pure pharma portfolio, right? It doesn't happen. I, I will not do it. So, I don't think my, of myself as right or wrong. I only think of myself as will I make money, will I not make money. To me, it doesn't matter that I make more money in pharma and less money in IT, right? I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that I got over the next four years, I got 34% return, 34% uh, CAGR in pharma and only 21% CAGR in IT. It does not matter to me at all because one day it will become 34 year and 21 there. I will never go to a, even if I know I am going to underperform the index in this portion of my portfolio, to me it does not matter. What I am trying to do is achieve an absolute return in my portfolio for which I may move to a lot of cash at some point in time. I may not move to gold, but I may move to cash in some point of time. I may move to real estate. I haven't done that at all. But I may move to real estate if, uh, if need be, right? So, that is what I am saying, working on probability and that is what makes me very worried when I appear on television and people ask me what will happen because I can only talk of probability, right? This might happen. For example, uh, when interest rates go up, should you repay your home loan or should you invest? To me, the answer is very clear that if you are asking me a 20 or view, you should invest. The probability of me being right is very high, but that is what I can say. I cannot say I will definitely be right over the next 20 years. I have no clue what will happen. So, I, I keep saying that, uh, you know, over 20 years uh, equity will give better returns than uh, your um, uh, interest on the housing loan. So, if you are going to get 7% in uh, loan or maybe even an 8% loan and your markets are going to, uh, not consistently, but going to give you 12% return, you are making 4% alpha. What is there to even think about? However, people don't think like this. People look at it after 6 months, somebody will say, I told you, you should have repaid the loan. See, markets have fallen. Yes, markets have fallen. Markets will recover. That is what we are working on. We are working on probability. What is the probability that the market return will be greater than the home loan return? To me, over 20 years, yes. But over 3 months, I have no clue. Over 6 months, I have no clue. I don't even have a clue over 3 years, right? So, that is my question. Always, whenever I give advice as to do this, I am asking myself, what if I am wrong? Therefore, you build in some slack into your portfolio, you build some cash into your portfolio, you buy shares which are currently completely out of favor, right? You buy all that because, again, the simple question, what if I am wrong, right? So, many people want something like certainty. Morgan Housel talks about it. People want certainty. They want somebody to say, there will be a recession this year. I have no clue whether there will be a recession in 2022. Will 2022 be a good buying opportunity? I will know it only in 2027, right? 2008 was a great buying opportunity, but I knew that it was a great buying opportunity only in 2010. I did not know it in 2008. So, from the level at which we are, we will never be able to guess with certainty whether the market is going to go up or go down. And I have noticed one thing, there is no need to. But you have to get a reasonable probability that, okay, these industries look good and the outcome of uh, and uh, the fallout of these industries being good is these industries will also do well. So, if somebody tells you can the Asian paints will be a consistent compounder, it is perfectly alright for you to look at Kajaria Ceramics and say if Asian paint sells that much, Kajaria Ceramics tiles will also sell. Then you see how much they advertise, what they do and then you realize if you draw a chart, you won't be very far away from each other, right? So, you work on all those probabilities, associated industries, and things like that rather than saying this year there will be a recession, this year uh, pharma will do well, IT will not do well, right? It does not uh, simply because we do not know maybe IT will do well very, very, very well in US, but there could be some other companies from Indonesia or China or somebody who is taking a big, uh, bigger chunk of what 
Indian uh, com pharma companies were getting. Secondly, when technology does well, we do not understand which part of technology will do well because Sinjin is also a technology company, right? But it is a pharma technology. Uh, it could be telecom technology, it could be BFSI technology. So, which IT company in India will do well because it is in US, we have to know. What, if happen, what happens if they have a big operation in Europe and which does very badly, will that hurt? We do not know. Will people be moved from Europe to US? It makes sense. Will they get enough visas? We do not know. So, there are so many things we do not know and therefore, we have to worry about what if I am wrong. That is what, uh, uh, what I say, I mean by saying working on probability. Is the, is the pharma industry poised for a good run? Yes. Is Sun Pharma a good buy? Yes. If I buy Sun Pharma now, will I get a return greater than what I will get in the index? I do not know. Is it uh, necessary to have Sun Pharma in my portfolio? Answer is yes. Is the Sun Pharma valuation at 800 attractive? Yes. Is it attractive at 900? Yes. Will I continue to hold Sun Pharma when it is 1300? Given the same numbers, no. The valuation would have gone up. Will I be completely right in exiting uh, Sun Pharma at 1300 thinking it will come back to 800 and I will be able to buy more? I do not know. So, will I sell off everything that I have in Sun Pharma at 1300? Answer is no. Will I sell off my trading position? As of now, it looks like. But what happens if the EPS goes up very well? Then at 1300, the valuation may be right. I do not know at 1300 what I will do. I will take a decision at 1300. Like Keynes said, when the facts change, I change my mind, right? So, that is how a portfolio gets built over a long period of time. You work on probability. You work on the fact that uh, I, you do not know many things and you work on the probability that if you, you could be wrong about that industry, an industry which everybody thinks is overpriced, not, not worth it. You never know that for even that industry could do well. So, you pick up the weakest companies in that industry that would have been hammered the most. You pick that up. Right, I have a lot of mid cap uh, IT, but I do not talk about mid cap shares uh, afraid that I might trigger some action. So, I am I will not talk about that, but yes, I have mid cap stocks also, which uh, it this is another problem is we do not have enough data to check what we have thought also. So, I could be right about one company and completely wrong about another company. I may have got the industry right that the company wrong, some sometimes working bottom up. Uh, I would have just bought the right company simply because other factors were in place, not because I like the industry and then that industry booms and that I make money. So, I sometimes have gone top down, sometimes I have gone bottom up, bottom up. Does it always work? Well, you never know what will work, right? So, based on all this, uh, uh, I think uh, you work on, I mean, uh, I was just trying to read something which Morgan Housel says. So, I, I love working on probability and I love reading Morgan Housel. Thank you.